the non-existence of magic by roger bacon twelve hundred and fourteen to twelve hundred and ninety four this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org roger bacon the greatest natural philosopher of the middle ages was born in somersetshire england about twelve hundred and fourteen educated at oxford and paris by a luckless impulse he joined the franciscan mendicant order for which he had no vocation and which conflicted violently with his real one his mind was singularly like that of his great namesake francis bacon he believed in observation and experiment as the basis of deduction and never ceased urging the study of original sources and texts as the basis of any sound theological knowledge this theory counsel and practice convinced his superiors that he was heretically minded and dangerous and they imprisoned him for some years about 1265, Pope Clement IV, hearing of his scientific attainments, asked him to write out and send a summary of what he knew. In an incredibly short time, though denied pens and paper except by special permission, penniless, and obliged to get materials and skilled help, he wrote and sent his vast opus magus a summary of all known science and filled with original experiments and acute deductions he wrote also the opus minus opus tertium and minor pieces in twelve seventy eight his writings were condemned by his order as heretical and he was again confined he died in twelve ninety four his medieval repute as a magician was an ironical fate for one whose chief work was to combat such delusions to william of paris of and against fabricated appearances and of and against invocation of spirits i respond heartily to your request for though nature may be potent and wonderful yet art using nature as an instrument is more potent than natural gifts as we see in many things but whatever is beyond the operation of nature or of art either is not human or is fabricated and filled with frauds for there are those who fabricating appearances by swift motion of the organs or diversity of voices or ingenuity of apparatus or darkness or by collusion put many marvels before mortals which have no truths of existence the world is full of these as is manifest to the inquirer the jugglers play many tricks by quickness of hand and mediums fabricating a variety of voices in the stomach and throat and mouth form human voices far and near as they choose as if a spirit spoke through the man and they shape sounds as of brutes but pipes laid under the grass and hidden in recesses of the ground show us that the voice is human not of spirits which is fabricated with such huge mendacity and when inanimate things are moved swiftly in the dusk of morning or evening that is not reality but fraud and trick as to collusion it fabricates everything men wish according as they arrange with each other into all these however neither philosophic consideration investigates nor art nor the power of nature pauses to look but beside these is a more mischievous occupation when men against the laws of philosophy and against all reason invoke nefarious spirits through whom to achieve their will and their mistake is in this that they believe spirits to be subject to them and coerced by human power for this is impossible because human force is far inferior to that of spirits and on this point men err still more in this that they believe by the use of some natural means they can summon spirits or put them to flight and the error has been made up to this time when men strive by invocations and supplications and sacrifices to placate them and bring them into the service of the summoners while it would be much easier without such trial of skill to supplicate god or the good spirits for whatever man ought to repute useful 
since not even in useless matters do malign spirits appear favorable except so far as sinful deeds are permitted through men by god who rules and guides the human race and so these methods are beyond the example set by wisdom on the contrary they rather operate the other way nor do the truly philosophic ever concern themselves in the manner following of magic characters charms and their uses what should be held concerning charms and characters and other things of the kind i consider after this fashion it is far from doubtful that everything of the kind is at the present time false and uncertain for whatever things are universally beyond reasoning out which philosophers have come upon in the works of nature or art they have hidden as secrets from the unworthy thus if it were universally unknown that a magnet draws iron and someone wished to perform this feat in public he would draw characters and utter charms lest it might be perceived that the whole work of attraction was natural all such performances must be erroneous thus therefore so many things are hidden in the worlds of philosophers in many ways that a wise man ought to have the prudence to neglect charms and characters and investigate the works of nature and art and thus he should perceive that things as well animate as inanimate harmonize with each other according to the conformities of nature not according to the virtue of characters or a charm and thus many secrets of nature and art are estimated as magic by the unlearned and the magicians foolishly confide in characters and charms to which they ascribe virtue and by following them forsake the works of nature or art for the error of charms and characters and so this race of men is deprived of the utilities of wisdom impelled by its folly there are certain supplications of antiquity instituted by righteous men or still higher ordained by god and the angels and these can thus retain their primal virtue so in many regions to this day certain utterances are made over burning iron and over the waters of a stream and other like matters by which the innocent are absolved or the guilty condemned in the case and these are made by the authority of the church and of prelates for even the priests themselves make exorcisms with blessed water as is written in the old law of purgation by water by which the woman is proved an adulteress or faithful to her husband and there are many of the sort but the things contained in the magician's books are all forbidden by law however much truth they may contain because they are so much abused by rogues that it is not possible to distinguish between the true and the false hence whatever they say as to solomon or other wise men having composed this or that is to be denied because books of this sort are not received by the authority of the church nor by the wise but by misleaders who deceive the world furthermore they compose new books themselves and multiply new inventions as we know by experience and then that they may entice men the more forcibly they prefix famous titles to these books and imprudently ascribe them to great authors and that they may leave no contingency unprovided for they devise a high-sounding style and fabricate lies under the pretense of their text as to characters they are either words arranged in inscribed figures containing the sense of a manufactured utterance or they are made to represent the appearance of the stars at chosen times of characters therefore our first judgment must be according to what is said of the utterances of the second sort if they are not made at the chosen times we know they have no inner efficacy and so he who makes them as they are formed in the books regarding nothing except the figure alone which he represents according to his pattern is judged by the wise as having done nothing they who know how to perform their work under the constellations due at a given phase of the sky are able to arrange not merely characters but all works either of art or nature according to the virtue of the sky 
but because it is difficult to know the skies with surety so there is much terror in them to many and there are few who know how to classify anything usefully and truthfully and therefore the mob of mathematicians judging and operating by the great stars do not accomplish much or do anything useful the learned however and those having sufficient skill can do many useful things as much by judgment as by working at chosen periods it is to be taken into consideration that a skilled physician and whoever else has to arouse the spirit can usefully according to the physician constantine employ charms and characters even if feigned not because the characters and charms themselves accomplish anything but that the medicine may be received more trustingly and eagerly and the spirit of the patient stimulated and he may more abundantly confide and hope and enjoy because the stimulated spirit can renovate many things in the body it informs so that it may convalesce from infirmity to health out of enjoyment and confidence if therefore the physician for the magnifying of his work that the patients may be excited to hope and confidence of health does something of this kind not for fraud nor for his own advantage if we believe the physician constantine it is not to be reprobated for he in his epistle concerning articles suspended from the neck thus allows charms and characters for the neck and defends them in such cases for the mind has much power over the body through its strong emotions as avicenna teaches in the fourth book on the mind and the eighth on animals and all wise men agree and thus sports are made in presence of the sick and agreeable things are brought to them on the other hand many things are sometimes conceded to the appetite because the passions conquer and the desire of life over death on wonderful artificial instruments i will first tell of the wonderful works of art in nature that i may afterwards assign the causes and manner of them in which there is nothing magical that it may be seen that all magic power is inferior to these works and worthless and first for the quality and reason of art alone for instruments of navigation can be made without men as rowers so that the largest ships river and ocean may be borne on with the guidance of one man with greater speed than if full of men also carriages can be made so that without an animal they may be moved with incalculable speed as we may assume the sith chariots to have been with which battles were fought in ancient times also instruments for flying can be made so that a man may sit in the middle of the instrument revolving some contrivance by which wings artificially constructed may beat the air in the manner of a flying bird also an instrument small in size for the elevation and depression of weights almost infinitely than which nothing more useful could chance for by an instrument three fingers high and the same breath and a less volume a man can snatch himself and his friends from all danger of prison both to elevate and descend an instrument can also be easily made by which one man can forcibly draw a thousand to him despite their will and so of drawing other things instruments can also be made for walking in the seas or rivers down to the bottom without bodily peril for alexander the great used these that he might view the secrets of the ocean according to what ethicus the astronomer narrates these things were done in ancient times and are done in our own as is certain unless it may be the instrument for flying which i have not seen nor do i know any man who has seen but i know that the wise man who planned this device completed it and such things can be made almost infinitely as bridges across rivers without pillars or any other support and machines and unheard-of devices of experiments in artificial sight but more philosophical forms have been invented 
for thus transparent glasses may be fashioned so that one may appear many and one man an army and as many suns and moons as we please may be made to appear for thus nature sometimes forms vapours so that two suns and two moons and even three at once appear in the air as pliny relates in the second book of his natural history for which reason many and an infinite number may appear in the air because after a thing has exceeded its unity no number is limited for it as aristotle argues in the chapter de vaco and thus in every city and on the other hand in every army there can be terrors infinite so that either through the multiplication of stellar apparitions or of men collected against them they may almost despair especially if the following instances should be taken with the first for glasses can be so constructed that things placed very far off may appear very near and vice versa so that from an incredible distance we may read the minutest letters and number things however little and make the stars appear where we will and thus it is believed that julius caesar on the shore of the sea in gaul discovered through huge glasses the disposition and sites of the castles and towns of great britain bodies may also be so constructed that the greatest may appear the least and vice versa the high may appear low and lowest and vice versa the hidden things may appear in sight for thus socrates discovered that the dragon poisoning the city and district with his pestilential breath lived in coverts among the mountains thus also on the other hand everything in cities or armies could be discovered by their enemies bodies could also be so constructed that poisonous beings and influences and infections could be let off whenever men wished for thus it is said that aristotle taught alexander in which instance the poison of a basilisk erected on the wall of a city against his army was turned against the city itself glasses could also be so constructed that every man could see gold and silver and whatever a man wished and whoever should hasten to the place of the vision should find nothing it behooves us therefore not to use magic illusions when the power of philosophy teaches us to perform quite enough but there is a sublimer power of construction by which the rays may be drawn and collected through various shapes and reflections to any distance we wish so far that any object may be burned for burning glasses acting forward and backward attest this as certain authors teach in their books and the greatest of all constructions and of things constructed is that the skies may be depicted according to their longitudes and latitudes in corporeal figure as they are moved in their daily motion and these things are worth a kingdom to the wise man these then suffice for examples of constructions however infinite a number of others may be put forward meantime of concealing the secrets of nature and art having enumerated certain examples concerning the power of nature and art that from a few things we may comprehend many from its parts the whole and from particulars universals so far that we may see it is not necessary for us to aspire after magic when art and nature suffice i wish now to follow items through their class and their causes and to give their method in particular but i judge that the secrets of nature are not transmitted through the skins of goats and sheep that they may be understood by any one who chooses just as socrates and aristotle wish and aristotle himself says in his book of secrets that he should be the breaker of the heaven seals if he communicated the secrets of nature and art adding how many evils follow him who reveals secrets further on in his point a gellius says in the book of the attic nights on the feast of the wise that it is foolish to offer lettuces to an ass when a thistle is enough for him 
and in the book of stones it is written that he lessens the majesty of things who divulges mystic ones nor do secrets remain of which the crowd is partaker by a commendable division the populace may be divided in opposition to the wise for what is seen by all is true and likewise what is seen by the wise and most of all by the noted therefore what is seen by the many that is the populace as far as of this sort ought to be held false i speak of the populace which is distinguished as against the wise in this commendable division for in the common conceptions of the mind it agrees with the wise but in the special principles and conclusions of the arts and sciences it disagrees with the wise laboring about appearances in sophisms and worthless matters which the wise do not care for in special and secret things therefore the populace errs and thus it is divided against the wise but in the common conceptions of the mind it is restrained under universal law and agrees with the wise but the cause of this secrecy toward the populace on the part of the wise was because the populace derides the wise and pays no heed to the secrets of wisdom and does not know enough to use the worthiest things and if by chance anything grand falls under its notice it destroys it and abuses it to the multiplex harm of persons and the community and so it is insane that anything secret should be written down unless it be concealed from the populace and with difficulty understood by the most studious and the wise so has run all the multitude of the wise from the beginning and it has hidden in many ways the secrets of wisdom from the populace for some have hidden many things by characters and charms others by enigmatic and figurative words as aristotle in the book of secrets saying to alexander o oh, alexander i wish to show you the greatest secret of secrets and the divine power shall aid you to conceal the mystery and to execute the design take therefore the stone which is not a stone and it is in what man you will and what place you will and what time you will and it is called the philosopher's egg and the terminus of the egg and thus innumerable things are found in many books and various sciences obscured by such speeches so that they cannot in any way be understood without a teacher how to make the philosopher's egg or stone and gunpowder six hundred and thirty years of the arabs being finished namely eleven fifty two a d i respond to your petition in this manner let there be taken of the bones of ada and of lime the same weight and let there be six at the stone of tagus and five at the stone of union and let them be rubbed up at the same time with water of life whose property it is to dissolve all other things so that they may be dissolved in it and cooked together and let this rubbing and cooking be repeated until they are insurrated that is that the parts may be united as in wax and the sign of insurrection is that the medicine liquefies over intensely glowing iron then let it be placed in the same water in a hot and damp place or suspended in the stream of very hot water then let them be dissolved and hardened in the sun then you are to take saltpetre and pour quicksilver upon lead and again wash and cleanse the lead with it so that it may be very near to silver and then operate as before also let the whole weight be thirty but yet of salt peter luro vopovir con utriet of sulphur and thus you may make thunder and lightning if you know the method of construction you can see nevertheless whether i speak enigmatically or truthfully and some may have judged otherwise for it has been said to me that you ought to resolve everything into a primal material on which you have two deliverances from aristotle in his popularized and famous book 
on account of which I am silent. And when you have possessed yourself of that, then you will have pure elements, simple and equal, and you may do this by contrary means and various operations, which I have before called the keys of art. And Aristotle says that equality of powers excludes action and passion and corruption. And Averroes says this in reprobation of Galen, and that is rated simpler in medicine and purer which can be procured and this is worth more than fevers and affections of the mind and body farewell and whoever shall have opened these things will have the key which opens them and no one may shut it and when he shall have shut it no one may open it end of the non-existence of magic by roger bacon 1214 to 1294